the good old debate of whether dogs are carnivores, herbivores or omnivores. The debate has never been fiercer. The debate has never gotten so strong with so many companies and so many people trying to tell you that your dog should eat this or should eat that. What at heart is your dog? Is your dog an omnivore or is your dog a carnivore? Well, let's look at these four things to determine whether a dog is a carnivore or an omnivore. The first thing I want to share with you is that dogs do not secrete something called amylase. Now, amylase is an enzyme in the mouth that helps us break down carbohydrates as a species. So the fact that dogs do not have this enzyme called amylase means that they cannot start breaking down any carbohydrates in the mouth. What do I mean by carbohydrates? What do I mean by starches? I mean from rice to wheat to anything refined to any other carbohydrates such as oats or such as vegetables or fruits for example. Whenever we as humans eat fruit or rice, wheat, barley or whatever we eat we start breaking it down in the mouth. However, dogs do not have this enzyme called amylase and they therefore cannot start digesting and absorbing all those nutrients until later on. The second thing is that they actually can make their own blood sugar from a process called gluconeogenesis. What the heck is gluconeogenesis? Well, that is the ability for your dog to make their own blood sugar from protein and fat. What does this mean? This means that your dog can make their own energy by just breaking down protein and fat. And they do not need any carbohydrates whatsoever. So any starches you feed your dog will be redundant because everything they need to survive and thrive comes from protein and fat in a process, as we said, called gluconeogenesis. The third reason is that they have, look at their canines, they have very sharp canines and they have jagged teeth, they have jagged canacial teeth and those are designed to chomp on meat and crush bone. And anytime you look at dog's mouth, you can see that that mouth is meant to eat and crush meat and bone and not to masticate. They cannot chew food like me and you. Whenever we eat a loaf of bread or whenever we eat a bit of a snack, we can actually chew it and we can actually masticate it. If you look at any dog, the way they eat the food is by ripping it or trying to rip it and then swallowing it whole or trying to wolf things down and that is a very clear indication that they are more carnivores than anything else. And the fourth one is that eyes of predators, eyes of carnivores, tend to point forward in the animal kingdom. You can look at any of the big cats, you can look at any of the big predators, such as polar bears, for example, and they are exclusive carnivores. They are obligate carnivores, just like house cats, for example. Now, there is a bit of an argument here that certain apex predators are indeed omnivores or are indeed herbivores. We can see gorillas, we can see hippos, for example, and those have nothing in common with dogs when it comes to their digestive system. But that is another indication that if you want to eat meat in the animal kingdom, you have to have your eyes pointed forward because if you have your eyes to their sides, that means that you are more likely to be subject to an attack by a predator, by a carnivore. Now, are these four reasons absolute? Are these four reasons absolute? Are these four reasons unquestionable? No, they are not, absolutely not. Dogs have indeed taken certain steps to break down carbohydrates and to have a bit more of a tolerance for starches and carbohydrates. They can actually produce some hepatic glucokinase 
in their liver and they can digest starches in the liver, the pancreas and the kidneys. This, however, shouldn't be taken as a lot of companies and a lot of people who just think that they have a rabbit or they have something else and they try to modify their diet. A dog's primary diet should try to mimic, should try to replicate what the dog would eat in, in the wild, as it were. And that follows the whole prey ratios, whereby 70 to 80% of the diet should be meat, should be lean meat, 10% should be offal, of which 5% should be liver, and then 10% is bone. And within those parameters, if you want to add a few starches, a few fruits, a few vegetables, nothing too intrusive, then that is okay. The problem becomes for dogs whenever we add refined carbohydrates into the mix, whenever we try to put wheat gluten in the food to cheapen out the dog food and then label it whatever we want to label it as a lot of big corporations do. Whether we agree or not that dogs are carnivores and what they need and what they don't need to survive, I want you to think, is this going to help my dog or is this going to hinder my dog's health? And if you are a bit lost about your dog's diet and what they should eat, you should watch this video next.